like they planned it. They thought it right from the start. They said you don't look the part. No, you don't look the part. It's great to see you here tonight. We're here tonight to encourage you to get out the vote and to approve Referendum 74. And this, and this next song speaks to the dream in many of our hearts. Rhonda?
Good evening, my name is Barb Oliver. We're just weeks away, uh, days away from the election now, and a lot of you may be saying, you know, you hear, well, tell your stories and all that fun stuff. And you may think, well, I may not have a story to tell, but I still want to get the word out. Or I want to get involved, but I don't really want to get involved. So let me tell you a way that you can do this. When we tell our stories to somebody who's an undecided voter, the likelihood of them approving Referendum 74 increases by up to 70%. So the stories that you tell people matter. And tonight you're gonna to hear my story, Aaron's, a couple of the men. If you don't have a story to tell, go on YouTube. And when you're on YouTube, search for render, Referendum 74, and you'll see a lot of stories. You'll see Governor Gregoire's impassioned speech on Referendum 74. Take those URLs, take the web address, copy and paste it into your Facebook page, or better yet, to an email to somebody that you know is undecided. Write them a quick note. This is important to me. Please watch the videos. Let us tell the stories and let's get this vote out. We're only, we're polling right now at 49%, at so we're not quite there yet. So will you all do that for me, please? Okay, off my soapbox, now here's my story. <laughs> when I was in my 30s, I was involved with a woman, uh, very serious relationship for about 10 years. Six years into the relationship, we decided to have a holy union. It wasn't legal or anything, but we filled the church to overflowing, and it was a day of great joy and celebration. Lots of love, lots of fun. About a year after that, we decided to intentionally start our family through insemination. And after some discussion, we decided that my partner would be the bio mom, mostly because her health insurance was better than mine. It happens. But you know, I was there in every way. I was there the moment my daughter was conceived. I was there through nine months of the pregnancy. I was there through 43 hours of the labor and delivery of my partner. And you know, at 328 on a Sunday morning when Casey popped her head out and I saw her for the first time, my life changed. And if you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about, right? Your life changes. Well, I love being mama. I love the 4 a.m. feedings. And I love later on going to the hardware store with Casey for the single reason of ringing all the doorbells just to see how much trouble we could get into. <laughs> but you know, like a lot of marriages, gay or straight, ours didn't make it. And because of the way the laws were written at the time, after we split up, I had absolutely no legal rights to my daughter, and I've never seen her since. Now the only way I get to watch Casey grow up is to look, to look on Facebook and see her photo. And even sadder still, my mom never gets to see her granddaughter anymore. Now those of you who are parents know that the one best thing in the world like this down here is when you have your arms around your kids and they hug you. My arms ache for that every day. And yet, even knowing the outcome, I wouldn't change a second of the way my life was back then. I can't change my past, but with Referendum 74 and your vote, you have the ability to change a lot of people's lives. It may be your son or daughter someday. It may be you if you're a parent or wanna be a parent someday. And if you're straight and you think, this law would never affect me, it may be your grandchild someday. All I ask is when you sit down with your ballot and your conscience and you think about approving referendum 74, you think about my daughter Casey, you think about her grandmother and me.
Hi, everyone. My name is Erin Havel. Uh, Ten days after my 30th birthday, I was diagnosed with chronic leukemia. Now, thankfully, there's a medication available that I can take every day that will keep the cancer at bay. Unfortunately, that medication costs nearly $8,000 every month. Insurance companies do not like me. I was very grateful to be allowed onto my partner's health insurance for her fellowship program here in Washington State. But what neither one of us really considered was what would happen after the fellowship ended. COBRA is a federal policy that does not extend to domestic partnerships. So after the fellowship ended, my partner was offered her additional years of COBRA coverage should she need it, and I was offered a COBRA-like policy that only extended up to 18 months. Now, 18 months may seem like a long period of time, but when you're on a daily chemotherapy drug that's saving your life, 18 months felt more like a countdown. During those 18 months, I really struggled to find any kind of insurance that would really cover my care, and I wasn't having much luck. My partner's job was not an option, because although she was working for a company in Bothell, Washington, the parent company was based in Tennessee, and Tennessee does not recognize domestic partnerships. In the paperwork she received, it stated that she absolutely could add her spouse onto her policy, so long as that spouse was a member of the opposite sex, and so long as they had a legal marriage certificate. Healthcare is my main concern in this election, because it has to be. But healthcare and marriage equality go hand in hand for someone like me, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. When companies come into our state to do business and they don't recognize the domestic partnership laws of the state, then the laws are not working as they were intended, and that's why we have Referendum 74 that we must approve. I encourage you, just like Barb, to please share your own personal stories, and if you don't have a story that you feel that you can share, please, please share mine, and together let's approve Referendum 74 and turn in your ballots. Thank you. <laughs> While we do a little gender switch up here on the uh, risers, let me introduce to you someone who has been a leader in the fight for marriage equality in Washington State for many years. He is the House prime sponsor of the marriage equality bill, but most importantly to me, he's a second tenor in the Seattle Men's Chorus. Please welcome Jamie Peterson.
Good evening, everybody. In a much smaller room just a few miles away on Capitol Hill right now, my partner Eric and our sons, Trig, Leif, Eric, and Anders, are enjoying movie night, which is our Friday night tradition. Uh, it has to be something pretty important to pull me away from that. Uh, they're probably watching one of two movies. Uh, one of their favorites is a movie called Up, a Pixar movie. And uh, if any of you haven't seen a really lovely piece that was authored by the, uh, the head of Seattle Prep, uh, a Jesuit preparatory school, uh, in which he took the Catholic hierarchy on and essentially said that the people who think that the only purpose of marriage is procreative need to watch that first 10 minutes of Up and see what it really means for a couple to take care of each other and how society benefits from that kind of a loving relationship. The other movie that my kids love to watch right now is The Lorax, and I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, they, we especially hear almost every night at dinner time, Ted, honey, stop playing with your food. You too, mom. <laughs> Which is uh, one of the favorite lines as we play with our food on the plate. My kids are growing up right now blissfully ignorant of the fact that their family is discriminated against and treated as second-class citizens by our government. But they have uh, an increasing awareness of the world around them, and I'm incredibly hopeful that 11 days from now, when the voters of Washington State go to the polls, just as they did in making history three years ago with the passage of Referendum 71 and becoming the first voters in the history of our country to approve rights and obligations for same-sex couples, that our voters will be the first in history to approve marriage equality for same-sex couples. Are we gonna make that happen? For those of you who want a quick way to crystallize what the difference is between marriage and domestic partnership, I want to share with you a very short story from a young man that I spoke on a panel with over at Holy Spirit Lutheran Church in Kirkland a few weeks ago. He said he had been with his partner for about three years, and his mom came to him and asked him, worried about him and his partner, honey, have you guys gotten registered as domestic partners yet? I want you to think about that and imagine, try to imagine a family with healthy communication where a mom would wonder whether her son was married. It's pretty close to impossible, isn't it? And that, in a nutshell, says what the difference in terms of how society perceives it uh, is between a domestic partnership and a marriage. Marriage is the gold standard of protection for families, and the families of same-sex couples deserve to be treated equally by their government. We have the right and the power to make that happen, but I want to tell you it's not going to happen if we're complacent. How many of you all have voted already? For those of you who haven't, please turn in your ballots as quickly as possible so that you can go to work telling your stories and encouraging all of your neighbors and friends and coworkers to vote. Uh, I ran the list in my precinct, my little four block area on Capitol Hill today. There are 354 of my neighbors who have not yet turned in their ballots, who are registered voters. Tomorrow I'm gonna be out knocking on those doors. I hope that you all will find your own way of engaging and of telling your stories so that when we wake up on November 6th, we can all feel, or sorry, the 7th, I guess, we can all feel proud uh, that we live in a state that believes that all people should be treated equally. As the Onceler says at the end of the Lorax, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. Please take that to heart and take responsibility for making sure that we're proud to be in Washington. Thank you.
la vida loca, she's living la vida loca. Like a bullet to the brain oh, Outside, inside out She's living la vida loca She'll push and pull you down Living la vida loca Her lips are devil red And her skin's the color of mocha She will wear you out Living la vida loca For nearly 30 years, we struggled in Washington State to achieve basic anti-discrimination protections. And the person who is most responsible for making that a reality for all of us and providing us protection at work and in seeking apartments and houses, in financial transactions, and in every other aspect of our life, who continued by uh, creating our domestic partner registry and working to build that out, culminating in the everything but marriage law three years ago that became law after referendum 71 passed to the ballot box, is here tonight. I am very proud to invite up to the stage the prime sponsor of the marriage equality bill, Senator Ed Murray. Thank you. Thank you so very much. You know, 17 years ago was the, the during, let me try that again. I want to give you some numbers. 17 years ago, during the first week I was in the legislature in 1996, the Defense of Marriage Act, so-called Defense of Marriage Act, was introduced. Also about 17 years ago, I met a young man who just graduated from law school and he said he wanted to work on an issue and he became the leader of that issue and that's Representative Jamie Peterson. <laughs> but 17 years later, 2012 has been a year of wonder. As Jamie and I watched some of those same legislators who voted for the Defense of Marriage Act vote for marriage equality for our families. As I watched our legislature past marriage equality. Some of those legislators did it at the risk of their own careers. You know, 17 years later, I would not have thought we would be here, and you've heard me say that before probably, and I would not have imagined that we would have, as a community, built the best campaign organization I've ever seen. <clears throat> and let's hear it for Washington United for Marriage. But this campaign is not won, not yet, as some people seem to think, and it's certainly not lost. This campaign, like most campaigns, is going to be determined in the next 10 days. And you all can do something to make sure we win. And I'm going to ask you to do some things that I'm sure you've done before. I won't ask you to vote again if you've already voted, so forget that one. Uh, but I am going to ask you to consider contributing again, because if you give some more money, we can buy some radio time on Spanish radio in the Central Valley. If you're willing to give up an evening and do some phone banks and call places like Puyallup, where Jamie was born, or Aberdeen, where I was born, or give up an afternoon next weekend and doorbell in the suburbs around Seattle. If you do those things, then we can win. So think about that. 
just a few more dollars or just a few hours of your time. And I think Jamie said it best when he talked about his family, because winning is more important than just my partner of 21 years, Michael, just more important than just us getting married. What it's really about, it's about the future, it's about children, and it's about two groups of children. One group are lesbian, and gay, bisexual, and transgender children. They'll wake up on November 7th knowing that they can have a life that many of us never could have imagined, that they can someday, when they're grown up, marry the person they love. <laughs> the other group of children are the children of gay parents or the children of lesbian parents. They'll wake up on November 7th, and they'll know that this state will treat their family like a real family, like just any other family. That's why this re referendum is so incredibly important. So before I close, I want to give you one more idea of what you can do. And I am a politician, so I have lots of ideas of things that you can do. Um, my partner, Michael, every night writes to people that he went to high school with in Spokane, or neighbors who lived by him in the, in the valley in Spokane. And he writes about our life together and our family. So think about that. Think about somebody you know or knew who lives in this state, outside of Seattle probably, and think about writing them a note. And finally, remember how far we've come. You know, I know you've heard the quote before, but to paraphrase Gandhi, you know, first they ignored us, and we all knew what that felt like. And then they laughed at us, and we certainly know what that felt like. And then, and then we win. So let's win on November 6th. Thank you.
Good evening, everybody. My name is Chris Gaynor, and I've been a family physician for about 17 years. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm here because for, for that 17 years, I've been aware of the impact that being gay in a homophobic society can have on all of us who are in sexual minorities. And they're far-reaching mental health problems, including anxiety, depression, suicidality, substance abuse, and I could go on. Over the years, I've worked with my state association, the Washington Academy of Family Physicians, and the American Academy of Family Physicians to start recognizing the importance of beginning to address these needs of our patients. And I'm happy to say they've come a long way. Just in September, the Washington Academy of Family Physicians voted to support R74. Your family, thank you. Washington families, Washington's family physicians support all of our patients because it's healthy for Washington families. And what's healthy for Washington families is good for Washington state. It doesn't stop there. Just a few weeks ago, I was in Philadelphia for the uh, American Academy of Family Physicians Congress of Delegates, where the entire Congress voted 75 to 44 to support gay marriage, same sex, same gender marriage, because it's healthy for families and children. So be sure to thank your family physician. Thank you very much. The tides are turning, and we're going to win this. All right. Marriage equality? <clears throat> Actually, marriage anything, I've always thought of with a big question mark. <clears throat> when I embraced my, again, my gay identity, like many here decades ago, <clears throat> I also automatically let go of things that I thought would simply never happen, like getting married or raising a family. <clears throat> Fortunately, time moved forward and so did I. <clears throat> um, just this summer, I celebrated my 20th anniversary with my beloved Norbert <clears throat> and have two grown sons. <clears throat> Our lives would have been vastly easier if when he moved from Germany to be with me <clears throat> over 20 years ago, I'm sorry, 20 years ago, uh, it, I simply could have married him. Case closed, done. Instead, we spent literally years <clears throat> and thousands of dollars trying to establish a legal and secure identity for him here in these United States and worked effortfully with three governments, one of them a local U.S. government being the most um, antagonistic to what we were trying to do. <clears throat> I really want to support and thank each of you for your willingness to stand up in this quest and endeavor for equality and justice in Washington State. Society needs all kinds of pioneers to help us move forward, and I think your presence here tonight and your belief in this uh, endeavor really helps inspire me and everyone else who believes in this that it really can happen this year. Thank you for being those kind of pioneers. We're not going to sing anymore. We're just going to have a series of people coming up to this mic and saying things. So I, I heard a rumor that there are some heterosexual people here tonight. Is this true? You are so brave. It really is because of the help of, the, of our straight allies that we're able to be where we are today. Any civil rights struggle, there's a certain amount that we can do from within, but it's always the allies on the outside of the group that is defining itself as needing more help than we have. Did that make sense? <laughs> I was so clear the last time. Um, thank you so much, all of our, our straight allies, for helping us attain where we have, and uh, we could not have done this without you. Thank you very much. And it does seem to boil down, those that oppose marriage equality, it does seem that their argument boils down to two words. It's icky. And I don't know, I, I, I think I would need something a little bit more than it's icky to try to enact something into law. I don't know. But you know, when you think about it, it's just love. It's just love. And what makes them think that they need to knock love around? Keep on moving ahead 
Each victory, each brief defeat brings us closer to the day we're wed. Why draw these lines in the sand? Why name us such a battleground? Who here can help us understand? Why do you feel you gotta knock? All around, don't knock it, don't knock, knock it's only love. Don't knock it, don't knock, knock it's just love. Don't knock it, don't knock. The Bill of Rights Wielded as weapons in the frame Each winning vote Each losing poll Decides who gets their equal rights today How can you vote on our lives When yours are We are fortunate to have with us tonight a guest from Tacoma. Her, she is a, a two-time scholarship winner from the Pride Foundation, and she's here to sing a song. Yes, thank you, Pride Foundation. And she's here to sing a song featured in the movie Camp. Ladies and gentlemen, Christina Brewer. Do I have any Pride Foundation people here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. The work that you do is what made my college a possibility. You know, this song is absolutely dear to my heart, and it has such a strong meaning in it. And it is my pride to be here. I'm so happy to be here. And so with that said...
love me, but don't tell me who I have to be. Here's who I am. I'm what you see. You said I had to change, and I was trying, but my my heart. Now it's my pleasure to introduce to you the chair of Washington United for Marriage. She's come to speak and bring us greetings tonight. Please welcome Lacey All. Lacey? Good evening, everyone. That was very inspiring. Thank you. So my name is Lacey All, and I'm the chair of Washington United for Marriage, and I am so pleased to be here tonight because you are Washington United for Marriage. You know, I get the great pleasure of being in front of you, but you've heard from our leaders. You've heard from Representative Jamie Peterson tonight. You heard from Senator Ed Murray, and these two gentlemen have really carried the way along with so many people in this room to make it possible for Washington United for Marriage to have this last part of the relay and to be able to carry us over the finish line for November 6th. So thank you. Thank you. 
so Ed primed me a little bit, but what I'm here tonight to tell you about is what the next 11 days look like. You know, we formed Washington United for Marriage 14 months ago, and we took the momentum from Referendum 71 and the work that so many people in this room did to be able to build a coalition of over 800 organizations, unions, churches, and businesses, and individuals to make sure that we have, we engage the full power of our community to make sure that November 6th is a day of celebration. And I wanna thank all of you for that because you're all a part of making that moment of history. So these next 11 days, you guys are gonna be really tough. And, and Ed talked to you a little bit about this and, and Jamie a little bit as well. You know, we can't all pull our precincts to see who hasn't voted, but what you can do is you can make sure that you talk to every single person you know and you ask them if they have had a chance to vote. Uh, last night I was uh, phone banking to make sure that I reminded myself of what was happening in the community and I spoke to a woman named Cora. And I imagine that Cora was probably in her 70s and she lived alone and her husband had died. And we talked for about 20 minutes about what marriage ma meant to her. And I asked her if she had any gay or lesbian people in her life and she said that she did. And I asked, have any of them talked to you about why marriage matters to, to them? And she told me no. And I thought, you know what, there's probably some people in my life that I haven't talked to. So I want you to survey and think about who you haven't talked to and who you've been sort of building up the energy and the, the courage to do that with and to do that starting tomorrow or even tonight when you leave. And, I, and because you gave me a mic, I can't leave the stage without doing the other thing that Ed mentioned, which is we have to continue to give. These next 11 days matter because we have to make sure that we stay in the living room of every Washingtonian through commercials and through radio, in addition to all the phone banking and the canvassing that we need to do. So I think right now we have a few volunteers and staff from Washington United that are going down the, the aisles, and they're gonna pass out a remit slip. And in the back of your chairs, you have pens. And I know that for many of you, I'm looking at some of you who have already, I've already asked you maybe once, and some of you maybe even twice for money. And I'm asking you again, because we have to make sure November 6th is a day of celebration. And then after you fill out your remit slip, we're gonna have people outside at the end of this show um, to collect those. And we have some merchandise for you to take home as well if you'd like that. Um, but then what I'm gonna ask you to do is to come down to one of your local action centers. Tomorrow we have a big, huge get out the vote effort. Um, yesterday we made 72,000 phone calls and we wanna match that tomorrow and we need your help to do so. So will you join me? Okay, thank you, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Wouldn't it be great fun to be the age of Jamie's four boys right now and have a life to look forward to? Or even Christina, I'd love to be your age. But I am so thankful that I was able to live through this momentous period in history and able to be part of a movement to win our full civil liberties as gay and lesbian people. It's just a tremendously exciting time in history. The Women's Chorus is going to be the one that finishes for you tonight, and I need to mention that uh, we divided the chorus up and asked each one of them to sing one of five different marriage equality concerts that we have done over the last six weeks in Olympia, Tacoma, Renton, Belling, uh, Renton, Edmonds, Bellingham, and then here. Now, I added Renton, that was a six, but that was pretty much a marriage equality concert, too. <laughs> then the women's chorus for the last two weeks did four concerts at St. Mark's, during which we told our stories and sang songs that, to move people's hearts. So this chorus has been extremely busy for the last six weeks, singing out for marriage equality. <laughs> and... This is probably about one quarter of the total chorus singers. But as I said, they each took turns doing these concerts. These would not have been possible had it not been for the uh, encouragement and for the planning of a group of our donors through the Pride Foundation who made uh, who raised the money themselves to make all of these concerts underwritten so that we didn't have to spend a dime. Everything that we collect at the concerts goes straight to marriage equality and to the campaign. So if you're, some of you are here tonight, and I want to thank you. Yeah. All right. Now it's time to go home and get to work. I hope this next song inspires you. See more. 